That's actually quite nice. What is it? It's one of the bar's essential to Chris's success. Oh. But I thought I'd have one. Our friend Chris is currently attempting to ride seven Everests in seven days. That is the height of Everest in vertical meters cycled up a hill. This is the bike he's doing it on and uh, we don't really know anything about it but we're gonna attempt to do a bike check on it. Well I thought because there's two wow. of us we can share the effort and try and figure out. We've, we've both had that group set so that makes sense. Yeah. We've both had those wheels that makes sense. That makes sense. sense. Uh, yeah we can work it out. Start with the frame. The frame is a Cervelo. <laughs> it doesn't say anything else. It's literally a Yumbo Visma team bike. But under under there, wow, oh, this is so, this is that stuck so stuck. well. Jumbo Vizzy. What is Yumbo Visma? It's a 54 centimeter. <laughs> the Valo. Fancy jockey wheels. Yeah, ceramic. Are they definitely ceramic ones though? Isn't that a version that isn't ceramic? But you know if they're ceramic for sure. Take them apart. Should we take them apart? Yeah. We're gonna have to. Otherwise, we can't do it accurately. They've got like numbers, haven't they? So it's like a three or a. It's an S R series. S. Is it R? It's an R series. It's an R3. How about I'll say all of the numbers and then you can just cut the one that is. R1, R2, R3, R4. Velo, yellow, black. No, but it's not actually available. Thanks to Chris's Instagram account, we've confirmed that this is a Cervelo R5. I'm sure he said it's something like one of 15 in the world. He also said it was six point something kilos. Six point something. Six point something. It weighs six point eight kilos. Six point eight with bottle cages and pedals. It's the prototype that they got Yamaha Visma to test out before they released it. I basically ended up with Vingegaard spare frame. It's raw carbon, and they do it's like a basically like an ink transfer. So if you look at the the dark on it, you can see the carbon fleck through it, and the patterns created from honeycombs. Basically, you're out of breath talking yeah. to me so you should probably stop talking to me yeah thank you thank you good luck with the rest of the challenge good luck with the rest of your day <laughs> more butt massage should we eat all what of his else? food he's got anything else secret in there no it's just food should we eat all of his food so then when he's out on the climb later he just won't have any food group set is 11 speed dura ace so not the latest version it's also got a bit of a mix there's an altegra rear mech the rest is dura ace it's di2 it's disc brake the chain set is a complete compact so 34 50. On the back, he's also got an 11-34, so like a one-to-one -one ratio, good for climbing. 170 millimeter cranks, and I believe it's got a stages power meter on both sides. Durace pedals, fancy bastards. I'm assuming when you buy a Cervelo, you also get a, it's like a frame set plus aero seat post, which is matches the frame, and a Cervelo stem as well, awesome. which has all the pieces that Ooh. integrate with the bars and the headset. So the bar and the stem is definitely Cervelo because it says it on it. Definitely all very carbon as well. That stem is very nice, isn't it? Yeah, 120 mil stem, carbon bars, with a bit of a flat top mm. to them. Comfy. I've always liked that. A pro stealth saddle. I'm pretty sure he has this on every single bike. Yeah, that's um, the road version with a hole in it. If you buy the off-road version of the Pro Stealth saddle. The middle is filled in, so your arse doesn't get sprayed with shit. Atticus tool roll, standard on all bikes in the world, should be. Should be. Although he's doing the Everest attempts on a completely closed road, it has actually been quite useful having a light on the back of his bike because it's been very, very foggy at the top of the climb. And then if you can see behind me, even though it is nice and sunny here, the top of the mountains, it's foggy and you can't really see what's going on. So. Rear light means other riders who are joining him, who've hopped the fence and are probably illegally riding the closed road, can see him. Long borders. There are occasionally like farm vehicles on them and things like that. He wheels. has wheels on his bike. We know this because we know Dov. They are parkours. They are parkour rondas. So these are the all road wheel set from parkour. About the same depth as the gravel ones that they do, but with a lower spoke count because you don't need as many spokes if you're doing road. On the front we have a Schwalbe Pro 1 with an amber wall and on the rear we have a Schwalbe Pro 1 without an amber wall. Why? We had to change the tyre, he shredded it. Unfortunately we got rid of the tyre otherwise I would have shown you. It was, it was, he was coming down he was like it's a bit sketchy, I think we need to check my bike over. I was like yeah we should change that tyre. Like flat on the top. So the climb that he's doing the attempt on has been resurfaced at the top which means it's very very slick so I think there has been situations where he's been locking out his back wheel um, having said that he dropped me when we got to the top earlier 
So he definitely knows the descent now mm. very, very well. He's been keen. He's it. flying down it, mm. yeah. Swiss stop pads, I think they cost about a million pounds. And they squeeze onto a 160 rotor on the front and a 140 rotor on the back. The rotors he's using are the Dura Ace ones. I thought they were those XTR ones for a minute, but they're not. So it's like MT800 or something? That you can use the mountain bike rotors on a road bike, and they're exactly the same. Um, and marginally lighter, although I think this has been resolved with the latest version of Dura Ace, and they just make one rotor to use with both group sets, I think. Head unit is a Garmin 1030 Plus, so the biggest version they currently do. Nice big screen, so you can navigate his way up and down the car. He has a sick mount for it. Have you have you seen this before? It's got like an up and down switch on it. it looks like it's 3D printed or something. Oh yeah, this is the one where you can put the power pack underneath. Race, race wear? Yeah. Race wear it looks like it's made by. Yeah, they 3D print all their stuff. So yeah, because this is obviously, it's, so it's mounted to the stem cap thing. It's got a GoPro mount at the bottom. It's then obviously got some kind of mount you can fix on there, presumably for a light. And I don't know, it's just something kind of cool about like putting it in and just flicking the switch down. Also, if they don't make one already, you can email them and go like, I need a mount with this on that fits this computer with a GoPro thing on the bottom or whatever your requirement might be. And then they, and go, make and they go, print money. Potentially top secret, maybe we should have checked before putting it in the video. Prototype tail fin top tube bag. It's white, unlike most of the tail fin products and that indicates that it is a prototype product. Um, so Chris is testing it. Uh, before the final production version might release. I don't know if it will. You ready for the final piece? Every day we usually have some kind of motivation thing. This was Andy's motivation piece for maybe day, day one of the other days. God knows which one. Please hold Jar Jar. How would you, out of all the Star Wars characters? <laughs> it's, obviously the one, it's obviously the one Andy was trying to get rid of, wasn't it? <laughs> That is the end of the bike check video. As you can see, it is now raining, which means it's very, very horrible for Chris. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for tomorrow's episode, which will be a full video all about the challenge. You okay, Jimmy? Hello, sir. Would you like some waffles in ham? <laughs> <laughs>